Hogwarts Legacy is pretty dang good if you ask me. Now it's not perfect by any means, but as a Harry Potter fan, I rank it about an 8 out of 10. And I'll tell you why. I'm about 66 hours into the game and I've done a ton of exploring. So much exploring in fact that I've realized that there's a reasonable amount of bathrooms, but I still question the hygiene of the students because only the prefix have access to bathtubs. And flying on a broomstick never seems to get old for me, especially when I'm flying over the magnificent views of Hogwarts. And if you have a little bit of patience and imagination, the combat's actually quite enjoyable, not to mention the spell list is pretty extensive. If you challenge yourself and release the true witch or wizard within yourself, and with a little bit of creativity and patience, you'll find that the spell casting is actually very satisfying. Seriously though, exploring Hogwarts was my absolute favorite part of this game and walking through the empty hallways with Lumos was so magical for me, I absolutely loved it. But the more I explored Hogwarts and walked around, the more I realized that Hogwarts is actually not very accurate in this video game, at least compared to the book. Surprisingly, with the amount of chambers, hallways, and classrooms inside this video game, there's actually a few rooms that were missing, and a few rooms that were not even in the book at all. Starting off with the Transfiguration Courtyard, I'm not sure if this was in the book or not, but let's just say that this is the ground floor. So from here we're going to go up these steps and through these double doors, and we're going to enter what is called the Central Hall. That's not in the book at all, but we're going to take a right and we're gonna run right into the statue. This is the statue of Gregory the Smarmy. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this was referenced in the third book by Fred and George. Allegedly, there's a hidden passageway behind this statue that Fred and George found in their first year. So if we head down this corridor right here, we're gonna head towards the potions classroom, which in the book is actually in the dungeons. But in the video game, it's just right here on the ground floor. Like what gives? Did they really get this wrong? I don't know why this bothers me so much, but this is definitely the ground floor. This is not the potions dungeon. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing I dislike about the actual design of the classroom. I actually quite like it. There's a wonderful attention to detail and it's almost identical to the one that you see on the big screen. I especially love the enchanted flying books. This is a callback to some of the old Harry Potter games. Once you leave the potions classroom, if you take a right, you'll see a spiral staircase that looks like it's heading towards, well, the dungeons, ironically enough, but surprisingly, it's not even close to the dungeons. After you start Hogwarts Legacy, there's a lot of doors in Hogwarts that you cannot unlock until you learn Alohomora. And after I saw that this was one of those doors, I thought to myself, well, maybe there's actually another potions classroom behind this door. Nope, it's just a hallway. This hallway is called the Long Gallery and it's actually not in the Harry Potter books, which didn't bother me too much, but what is down here is the Potion Supply Closet. They were so very close, it seems like the idea was there, but they never executed the idea to the fullest. But if you continue on down the Long Gallery, you'll reach a staircase that will lead you to a door and it opens up into something called the Bell Tower. This is also not in the Harry Potter books. However, the walls are decorated with suits of armor. This reminds me of the scene in Deathly Hallows Part 2 where Professor McGonagall casts that defensive spell where all the suits of armor become alive and she tells them to defend Hogwarts. But anyways, before I get carried away, let's go to the actual real dungeons. Through this door and down some steps is the actual entrance to the real dungeons of Hogwarts. Now in the book, the dungeons is not only the home to the potions classroom, but it's also very close to the Slytherin dungeon. In this game, I believe that the Slytherin dungeon is actually on the other side of the castle in a completely separate building. What is in the dungeons, however, you'll never guess. It's the Muggle Studies classroom. This is supposed to be on the first floor in the books, not in the dungeons. And once again, I have no idea why they did this. This makes absolutely no sense. But wait, wasn't there a second door in the dungeons? Could it be? Is this, is this it? Could this be the potions classroom? Snape's potions classroom in the dungeons? I mean, there's cauldrons around the door. Surely it has to be the potions classroom. Wait, what? Alchemy? The alchemy classroom? Are you joking? As far as the books are concerned, I'm pretty sure alchemy is not even mentioned once as a class available for students. And look, a shovel digging up stones. Stones that they can use to turn into gold. That's what alchemy is. I mean, it's not even the same thing as potions. Huh, <sighs> just when I thought I was onto something. Is Nicholas Flamel the professor? Okay, now let's go back to the central hall. I believe that this is the first floor of Hogwarts because, well, the library's here. 
And I did really love the design of the library. My only gripe is that I wish it was a little bit bigger. In the book, it's described as having thousands of bookshelves, and I think they're lacking a few hundred. Now the restricted section is more the size that I was actually expecting for the library. It's about three stories and it's very dark and ominous and I actually really like it a lot. So I give the game designers props for this. Let's talk about secret passageways. This is my other bigger gripe about the game, and I do think that there's a lack of secret passages. There are these frog statues that appear to teleport you throughout areas of the castle, but they're not really used for anything particular. Mostly these statues are used to bring you to different rooms with chests. Other than that, they're not very useful. Now I did find one hidden tapestry that had a door inside it that led down a hallway to another door into a chamber, and there's more tapestries that change with the spell Lumos, but it wasn't a secret passageway, just kind of a secret room. There are, however, tons, and I mean tons, of different statues that look like they would be secret passageways, especially this one right here, which has an almost identical statue in the Slytherin dungeon. And if you've read any of the Harry Potter books or even played the Half-Blood Prince, you know that a lot of statues are actually passageways throughout Hogwarts. And of course, most Harry Potter fans know about the One-Eyed Witch statue which takes you to Honeydukes, and this is actually in the game, which was pretty nice, although the secret passageway was fairly long and there's actually an elevator inside it, which doesn't really make much sense, considering that the book it was just one long hallway. This is supposed to be on the third floor, but we'll get back to that later. The hidden room called the Undercroft, however, is not in the Harry Potter books, but I'm not upset about it because who's to say that it's not actually in Hogwarts just because it's not mentioned in the books. But once again, the Undercroft is just a room, it's not a secret passageway, so I'm still upset with the amount of secret passageways inside Hogwarts Legacy. The map chamber is also not in the Harry Potter books, but once again, this just adds to good storytelling for the video game, and it doesn't take away from the Hogwarts lore. And if you play the game as a Slytherin, you get to discover Slytherin Scriptorum, which is a secret chamber hidden inside the Slytherin dungeon. However, this is not in the books, but I also give it a pass. It's kind of like a mini chamber of secrets. Now I want to talk about the moving staircase and the headmaster's office, because the headmaster's office makes absolutely no sense. However, I do like the design for the moving staircase. It's much different from the movies, but it's more accurate to the books. At least, that's what I like to think. Fun fact about the moving staircase in the book is that it actually does not exist. However, they do talk about how much the staircase has changed throughout Hogwarts. Now, this would be kind of hard to pull off in a video game, especially if some of the staircases lead one way one day, and they lead another way another day. However, that's exactly how they worked in the books. For whatever reason in this game, they decided to put the headmaster's office at the very tip tippity top of the castle, and you actually have to walk through the armory to get there. And by the way, the armory is actually also very confusing in the books because it actually has two locations, and it switches between the locations depending on the day. Now, as far as the headmaster's office is concerned, it's actually supposed to be on the ground floor. At least, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure because some things are very unclear in the book. And I believe that this corridor is supposed to be the Serpentine Corridor, which is actually on the first floor in the books. However, the Headmaster's office actually is at the top of a tower after you say the password to a gargoyle. So it is in a tower, just not at the tip-tippity top of the castle. And once again, I have no problem with the actual design of the Headmaster's office. It's just the location that I'm a little picky about. And the design and look and feel and ambiance of the headmaster's office is almost identical to the movie and the books. So they did a pretty good job. You can even see the sorting hat in the corner of the room. And you can even see the pensive in the back of the office. I can already picture Dobby standing here while Harry hands him his dirty sock and frees the elf. What a wonderful scene. Last but not least, let's talk about Hagrid's hut. Now, Hagrid wasn't even born when this game takes place, however, his hut is here at Hogwarts. It's supposed to be next to the lake, which they actually got correct in the video game. However, it's also supposed to be next to the Forbidden Forest, and they got that totally wrong. Let's pull up the map and take a look. As you can see, we are right here where this purple arrow is. That's where Hagrid's hut is located, and the Forbidden Forest is on the opposite side of the castle, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There are many scenes in the book where Hagrid's hut is clearly right next to the Forbidden Forest. Now let's talk about the Gryffindor common room. 
but first I just want to admire how beautiful the Great Hall is during the winter time. For a second, let's pretend like we're Harry in Sorcerer's Stone where he just got sorted into Gryffindor and he's on his way to the common room. In the first Harry Potter book, Harry describes going to the common room by walking through multiple sliding portraits and through tapestries. Now on the way to the Hogwarts Legacy common room, you walk up three sets of stairs so you're apparently on the third floor. You walk through the grand staircase and soon enough you're on the third floor and you can tell it's the third floor because, well, there's the statue of the one-eyed witch. And speaking of the third floor, where's the third floor corridor that's out of bounds? The one that, you know, houses Fluffy? Now I understand that Fluffy and the Sorcerer's Stone will probably not be at Hogwarts for a while, but if you go down the corridor which is on the right hand side, which should be the Forbidden Corridor, there's nothing but offices and definitely was not a trap door. Okay, let's not get sidetracked, let's go to the Gryffindor common room which is just up this spiral staircase. It's definitely not the seventh floor. Even if that was the third floor, this would just be the fourth floor, and the common room's supposed to be at the seventh floor. And as we all know, Harry Potter is a Gryffindor, so they should have gotten this correct, and they got it correct in most of the other games. And what's even more sad is it seems like they got the other common rooms correct as well, but just not the Gryffindor common room. My petty gripes aside, I do think that this video game is very beautiful, gorgeous, absolutely stunning, and it's so much fun to play, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan. I would absolutely love a sequel in the future, possibly taking place at Hogwarts during a different time period, maybe when the Marauders went to school at Hogwarts, that would be pretty pretty fun, or maybe even at the American Hogwarts called Ilvermorny. If they did make the sequel take place at Hogwarts, they could easily say that throughout the years Hogwarts changes, and that's why some of the classrooms are more book accurate in the right locations. But enough of my critiques, because I absolutely love this game and I've been waiting for a game like this for years. And if you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like, that really helps me out and I love your support. And if you haven't already, please subscribe down below, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.